Today we're going to discuss ptosis. Ptosis is actually derived from a Greek word meaning drooped. It can imply drooping of any body part, but we're specifically talking about eyelid drooping or ptosis. Ptosis is P-T-O-S-I-S, by the way. We have to differentiate this condition from drooping of the upper eyelid skin because the ptosis is actually from a weakness of deeper structures within the eyelid. Those deeper structures are muscles that elevate the eyelid up. Now, ptosis can either be congenital, meaning it's present at birth, or it could be something that's actually acquired over time. So aging patients frequently develop ptosis. Why that is, is that there, there's probably a loss of, of attachments of those muscles that raise the eyelid up. And as we age, those eyelids droop down. The second reason, which is very common in younger patients, is a prolonged use of contact lenses, particularly hard contact lenses, over time can stretch the muscle. How is that possible? The contact lens sits on the surface of the eye, and as the eyelid opens and closes thousands of times a day, it actually stretches out that muscle, okay? And over many years, I'm talking about 10 to 15 years, patients actually can develop ptosis as a result of using contact lenses. Now, it can even happen with soft contact lenses. Another reason would be an injury to the eye. So somebody who gets hit in the eye, for instance, might cause a detachment of that muscle that raises the eyelid up, and it may slip back and actually cause a drooped eyelid, usually on one side. Another reason would be a neurogenic reason. A neurologic reason that is an underlying neurologic disease that's causing the ptosis. We're not going to go into those multiple reasons neurologically that someone can develop ptosis, but that's another reason. We just talked about the reasons why you can develop ptosis, but it's very important during the preoperative assessment that you discuss with your doctor uh, whether or not you have ptosis and or upper eyelid lax skin, because sometimes only the skin laxity is addressed during the procedure that is being performed. And sometimes I've seen patients walk in and they've had a blepharoplasty or cosmetic upper eyelid surgery, and actually they have an underlying ptosis that remains and they're not happy with the end result. So it's key before anything is done to establish whether or not you have eyelid ptosis as well as upper eyelid laxity of skin. The two are actually totally different uh, problems and totally different approaches to fixing uh, the problems. Now let's talk about the treatment options that uh, you can uh, choose to do. One, is a non-invasive approach, and that is to use a topical drop called oxymetazoline. That's a generic name for a drug that's now approved by the FDA for topical use on the eye, which can contract a muscle internally in the eyelid, which raises the eyelid up for about six to eight hours after you apply the drop. The problem with these drops, of course, is that you have to put them in every day and it's not a permanent fix for the problem. Some people who either choose not to have surgery or they have medical conditions which preclude them from having undergoing surgery may choose to use these drops. However, if you want a longer sustained improvement, it's gonna require surgery. There are basically two approaches to lifting the eyelid up internally uh, where we're tightening muscles. There's two sets of muscles, an anterior set of muscles called the levator muscle and a posterior set of muscles called Mueller's muscle. I prefer tightening Mueller's muscle if I can on certain patients and I determine that at the time of the, of the consultation. Why 
The reason is I find that it is a more stable, longer lasting improvement. Sometimes tightening the muscle anteriorly can slip and a recurrent ptosis may occur more often. I also find the posterior approach is easier to perform for the patient as well as the surgeon and therefore that is the preferred approach in most cases. The surgery takes place under local anesthesia or under IV sedation. If you prefer where you go, you're in a twilight sleep. The procedure takes approximately 30 minutes and recovery time is approximately 30 to 40 minutes following the procedure and the suture is removed after a week. There should be minimal to no discomfort after the surgery and uh, is very comfortable uh, this procedure and very predictable in most cases. So the long-term benefits from ptosis repair are not only does it expand your field of vision, the amount of vision you can see after your eyelids have been elevated, but it also has a very profound effect on the emotions, not only your emotions in terms of the way you feel more alert and alive, but also people around you will respond to you much differently because when people see that you look tired and sleepy, they may also feel tired and sleepy, but when your eyes are open and alert appearing, they will also respond to you in a very uh, different manner. So long-term, this is a very, has a high degree of satisfaction and people are very pleased in most cases with the end result and also the response that they receive from the outer world. I hope you found this video to be informative. If you have any questions, please leave them below. And I look forward to seeing you in my next video.